Last week I made a video where I talked about my five favorite iPad drawing apps. And the comments in that video were overwhelming. There are a lot of people who love an app called Art Studio Pro. So today we're going to be taking a closer look at Art Studio Pro. So I wouldn't call this video a thorough review per se, it's more of my first impressions of using the app to draw a couple things. Now the first thing that I noticed about Art Studio Pro is how similar it is to Procreate. In the upper left hand corner of the app, there's a little square box icon. And that icon lets you toggle between something that looks like a desktop mode and something that looks more like a tablet mode. When you're in the tablet mode, it looks a lot like Procreate. In the upper right hand corner, you have your layers, you have your colors, you even have your different brushes. In the middle of the upper bar, you have everything you're going to need, your smudge tool, your brush tool, your eraser tool. And in the upper left, you have undo and redo. And then of course, along the side, most like Procreate is the ability to adjust the size of the brush you're using and also adjust the opacity or flow of that brush. Now, whereas Procreate hides a lot of their complexity inside things like the layers or inside the brushes or kind of tucks them into other tools, this app does it in desktop mode. So if I switch it over to desktop mode, you can see along the top, we have things like file, edit, image, adjust, things that you're used to. This isn't too surprising because it's also a desktop app. Now, I, I haven't used the desktop app yet, but it is available on the Mac. And from what I've seen from the screenshots, it looks very similar. You get all the tools you're going to need along the left hand side, and you've got your adjustments and things like that along the bottom. So obviously the big comparison here is how does it compare to Procreate? Well, it compares pretty well. First of all, it's snappy, it's quick, it's easy to pinch and zoom in and out. There's no lag or anything there. It handles big brushes really well without lagging. So the experience of drawing with it is very smooth. The one thing that I did run into is since it looks like Procreate and it feels like Procreate, there were a lot of things where I expected it to work like Procreate, but it didn't. I'm not saying that as a bad thing, it's just, it's a different app. And since it feels so much like an app that I'm used to, when it didn't behave the way I expected it, I was surprised. That doesn't make it worse, it doesn't make it better, it's just different. As I was using the app more and more, I could definitely see how some people prefer it over Procreate because of a couple key features. The first is a text tool. If you need text, you can't get that in Procreate, you can get that here. Also, if you're used to using desktop apps and used to having drop down menus with things like all of your edit commands in there, this can feel much more comfortable if you're jumping into the iPad for the very first time. One thing that I really liked is how it handles its color swatches. In the desktop mode along the right hand side, it has all of these color swatches and of course, you can save things to them. Since most of the stuff I paint tends to be in flat colors and I reuse the same colors a lot, it's much easier for me to just save what I need to that side palette than it is for me to press and hold to grab a color, which is another thing it does that's very similar to Procreate. Another feature we have that a lot of digital artists desperately want in Procreate is the ability to resize your canvas, or at least crop your canvas to a smaller size or crop it at a larger size. A lot of digital painters work in such a way that if there's some element of their canvas that isn't working, they'll just crop it off. Or if they want to add an extra element, they'll just make their canvas a little bigger. And that's something that you can do in Art Studio Pro. Another thing we need to talk about are the brushes. When I first started using the brushes, I thought, okay, these are good enough. But the deeper I dove, the more that I like them. And also you have the ability to import Photoshop brushes into this app. This isn't something I've had the opportunity Need to do a deep dive into yet, but it's cool to have that option. Overall, my experience here was very comparable to Procreate, and I, I feel bad about talking about Procreate so much, but I'm so familiar with it, and it's such a popular program that it's kind of inevitable that, that I have to talk about both at the same time. So while I'm here, I should just run over some of the features that I found while I was using the app. Can I export? Yeah, PNG, JPEG, TIFF, PSD, everything you need. Can I create and add new brushes? Absolutely, you can. There are a lot of brush options here. Can it do screen recording? It can, but I haven't quite figured out how to make it work. There's an option available for me on the screen, but it doesn't look like it saved any of the drawings that I was working on. There's probably a preference that I haven't found yet that I need to toggle on. Color picker, check. Smudge tool, check. Eraser, of course. More adjustments than you can shake a stick at. Gradient, yep. You can lock the position of a layer and the transparency of a layer. Locking the transparency is kind of like an alpha lock. There's also layer effects like strokes, drop shadows, outer glows, things like that. Can you mask a layer? Oh yeah. 
yeah, you could do that. Pretty much everything I think a good painting tool needs is here. So what does Procreate have that this app does not have? First is a quick line feature in Procreate. If you do a little squiggle of your pen tool and then you pause for a second, it'll turn into a straight line and you can draw straight lines that way. Also the brand new morphing and liquefying features that Procreate just added. There's nothing quite like that here either. And lastly are the grids. I at least haven't found any yet. Might be buried in here somewhere, but there's no perspective grid or standard grid. Now, if I'm gonna get nitpicky, there's there's a couple things here that I prefer to do in Procreate. Now, I don't know if it's just because it does it better or I'm just used to it. Procreate has a color drop tool and you could adjust the threshold really easily on that. This app has a paint bucket tool, but I don't know how to adjust the threshold on that. So whenever I was painting something in, it left a slight line around the area that I was filling in with the paint bucket. Another thing that got me is every time I started a new piece of art, I just would start drawing. That's what I do in Procreate because Procreate creates two layers for you, the background layer and the layer you're going to be drawing on. This app automatically automatically has you drawing on your white background layer. So halfway through my sketch, I go to adjust something or move something around, select something, and then I'd realize, oh, I forgot I'm, I'm on the same layer as my background. Again, that's just something I'm not used to. The other thing I'm not used to, and, and most apps do this, is that they auto save and a little white box pops up and says auto saving. Now that's something that Procreate does not do. Procreate is auto saving, obviously, in the background, but it's not disrupting the flow of your drawing. I'm usually in the middle of a line or doing some task when and all of a sudden that pops up and for only a second, I have to stop what I'm doing and wait for it to save. So those are my nitpicks. They're fairly small overall. This is a really good app and I was really surprised and I feel bad that I didn't get to it before I did my last video. I don't know if it would make it onto the list. It's pretty close. I think if you like Procreate, but you miss some of the features like the ability to resize your canvas, a text tool gradients, that sort of thing, this might be worth checking out. So that's all I've got for today. If you wanna learn more about Art Studio Pro, I'd point you over to Bora Dante's channel. It's one of my favorite YouTubers and he loves this program. He uses it a lot on the iPad, so he's definitely worth checking out. That's all I've got for today. Like, subscribe, you know what the drill is. I'll talk to you later.